extra, some some poetry about them, some some mm, something surprising, some paradox uh, in them, and uh, and it and it was a kind of so social story, you know, the, the territory of Ken Loach and, and and a few others in Britain, but but we didn't want to put that. We wanted to show love or the lack of love as the kind of central a central problem of of life on, on that estate. Um, and also, just it was the first time I did a film with a locked-off camera, which was quite a, quite a challenge, you know, not to move camera at all. I don't know whether you've noticed, yeah. but people just walk in and out of shot, and, and something I went back to in, with Ida, uh, in a way. In in this film, uh, I did I lost well, I mean, my. I just, I just wanted to ask Sorry. you quickly about about Ken Loach, and you yeah. said you mentioned him, and that's what I think of when I think of when I, with yeah. Rockers. But, but you also wanted to do something a little bit different, so I'm curious about that relationship. Because in the yeah. UK, that's the touchstone. That's, for yes, but Ken Loach is uh, yeah, and Kess was one of the great great uh, films uh, of my lifetime. You know, so so uh, you know, it's it's, a, it's one of these key films. At the same time, Ken Loach, you know, made a lot of films, a lot of them. He doesn't pay much attention to the kind of poetry of the image or, 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 or landscape. You know, it's all very, uh, very. The images are very functional, and also the story is kind of there to. Uh, they tend to be quite didactic. So the story tends to illustrate some kind of very clear ideas that he has. I don't have such clear ideas. Um, I think life is much more kind of. Um, Interesting, paradoxical, poetic, while being aware of the social, you know, social problems, uh, and and this film tried to kind of escape from that. Uh, yeah. uh, Talkers and others tried to escape from that uh, box. And so you were just—I'm sorry—and I inter interrupted. You were just about to say about last resort. No, I was just talking about the form. You know, with with, with yeah. last resort, uh, I kind of lost my nerve and didn't. I thought of doing it in locked off shots, but then I thought, oh, you know, I, I didn't have the, uh, the nerve. To, to do it, and I didn't know whether this story would hold up. It's such a fragile story, so I decided to shoot it in very wide shots and in very close handheld stuff, and just throw these two things together and see if it works. And we did some tests to see whether how it cuts, and it cut quite interestingly. So the form came out of uh, out of that. Um, another thing is that we made this. Last resort very cheaply. I think it costs something like two hundred eighty thousand pounds. In other words, maybe four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So there was no money for for cranes or for tracking shots. You know, so in a way, we cut our clothes to a cloth or you know, whatever the term is. So we found the form that would kind of be uh, um, uh, expressive and emotionally, you know. Um, resonant, but but which would which would allow us to be quite light on our feet and shoot, uh, you know, very quickly, 16, super 16, uh, and while giving myself still the opportunity to rewrite this, this story as I went along, you okay. know, which is my kind of trademark, uh, slightly. And so it, it did evolve the story while you were. Well, the story was kind of the beginning, middle, and end was what it was, but there were some kind of not not brilliant scenes in the script which I knew I'd have to kind of put to the back of the schedule. So <laughs> hopefully I'd come up with something better in the process of uh, of actually shooting it, which is what I still do these days. You know, but uh, but I, then I could only afford to do it at a price. You know, I mean the film was cheap, the actors were great, not very well known. I didn't get paid anything practically. Uh, the DP had a we had one electrician for one scene we got another one from from town uh, we just found really good locations and just moved the locations you know to create this slightly abstract place um, right because because you because it, it's shot in margate but you you call it something else it's stonehaven stonehaven yeah yeah i was being clever and then i discovered there is a place called stonehaven in scotland you know, so <laughs> And when I showed the film in Edinburgh, people was like, why is nobody speaking with a Scottish accent? But yeah, but it was supposed to be slightly abstract. You know, when I was in thinking up this story, I imagined it slightly in the future. You know, I thought this, this is like five years from now, and this was 99. Uh, so I thought, that's how England might become the way things are going, you know. And actually, I was, it was quite prophetic, you know, and people did get sent to these seaside resorts and without a, without a way out. Um, so, um, well, there's been a lot of talking about Children of Men, um, the Quran film as being a bit of a sort of prescient... Uh, yeah, know, well, Eric, Alfonso, but, but we met over before, this film. Uh, Alfonso this saw the right? film and he came, he came to me and said, oh, I like this film, it has something to do with... <laughs> I have similar notions, but, but this is like, uh, you know, 400,000 
Don't miss it. Yeah. yeah. But it's it, you, you, you beat me to the punch when you talk about the both uh, locked off distance shots, but also, not locked off, but sort of yeah. wider shots as well as this sort of handheld yeah. uh, jittery quality to it, which is interesting too because the, that. Um, that lack of middle ground is also how the, the narrative plays, I think, too. There's yeah. something that's almost docu-like about uh, what's happening in front of the camera. At the same yeah. time, it's a, it's a chamber piece. Yeah. It's like a real concentrated... And there's no kind of narrative steps, you know, like right. middle, like how you get from A to B, you just kind of get there. Which has become quite how you've perceived it. That's, yeah, I tend to, you know, yeah, you to miss out vital, <laughs> vital steps. Yeah. Often and just just go to the bits I like or the bits that are you know have some um, some uh, you know uh, weight yeah. and, and can be told visually and and through action rather than dialogue where people you know explain right. stuff to each other. Right. So and you have this incredible track record for uh, I, mean, I mean discovery is always a, 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 a dodgy term but the, the, the notion of actors that many many of us have not seen before. And, and certainly these two lead actors are extraordinary. I, mean, I was obsessed with Dina Corzon after this, yeah. um, and I kept wanting to see her more than we did over the, the, the last 18 years. But how you found her, but then also Patty Constant, who I think had one major film before this. Yeah. I, I just looked for a long time until I, until I thought I found something, someone that really excited me and that I wanted to see on screen. I always like in films um, to, not to see familiar faces, you know, which... Uh, yeah, which blocks my path towards a Hollywood career, <laughs> but uh, but I do like uh, I do like uh, films to be kind of sui generis, you know, that you kind of the world you haven't quite seen before, faces. You, I love that experience as an audience, uh, and uh, and I and I want to share it <laughs> with audiences. So in this case, I looked high and low. I looked around Russia for a long time, and I looked mainly at act dresses who have kids, you know, because I thought stupidly that, that maybe I'll, you know, get both. And then, um, and then in St. Petersburg I came across a, 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 not a very good actress, in, very, in fact the opposite, but she had a fantastic son, in fact Artyom, who was in the film. So I, so I, so I spent a, a week trying to kind of get him away from her, and then I discovered that... <laughs> Uh, and then I discovered that actually she, he wasn't her son at all, you know. She just borrowed her from a neighbor, him from a neighbor, and he was such a good bullshitter, you know. He was so good at that. For like a few days, he was like, with straight face, he was lying to me. I thought, well, if, he can, if he can lie like this, then he's going to do well. Plus, he was very charming, and he was all kind of like a little guy, you know, a little, little tough cookie. Very, very sharp, very, very funny. Uh, but he came from his, his real mother was a little bit like the... Like the uh, like 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 Dina's character here, uh, uh, so and then Dina, I saw her, uh, I saw her on stage in in Moscow. Um, she was with the Mchat Theater, the Stanislavski Theater, mm -hmm. and she's a great great actress. Mm -hmm. um, but really technically brilliant, you know, one of these well trained Russian actresses. But also she has this great personality, this kind of openness, this this kind of face that. Is Soul that wants to believe that that this kind of gets misled easily, but but is always full of uh, you know full of love. Um, so she had that quality, you know. So I kind of cast her, despite all her technical skills, <laughs> I just cast her for a character, you know, like a documentarist. <laughs> and she was a bit frustrated that you know I'm kind of I was kind of using too much of her and not enough of what she, you know her, okay. of her craft, if you. Yeah. Although for me, cinema is a you know, I mean, it's a funny, it's, it's a mystery how how acting works in cinema. You know, it's, it's not exactly craft, but yeah. well, not only. Uh, and Paddy, I saw, I was looking for that, that guy. I met somebody like his character when I was kind of driving around uh, the coastal towns of England, um, and I had a very precise guy in, in, in mind, and I couldn't find the actor because you know, I mean, it's difficult to find leading actors at any time. Uh, but then I was watching a film by Shane Meadows called Rome, Room for Romeo Brass, which was a kind of okay film, you know, for 10, 20 minutes, coming of age, you know, kids and stuff, and suddenly Paddy appeared. And he had such charisma, such magnetism and kind of energy, which is unusual in the English acting community. <laughs> um, and then I, uh, and he was just great, you know, it's really, where did he come from? You know, it's like a revelation. And then I met him, and he was nothing like on screen. He was a very delicate... Uh,